And I'm thinking that maybe the bishop b5 Sicilian. Thank you, everybody, for following. I appreciate you all. Um, I'm thinking the bishop b5 Sicilian might be a good combination of that, where I can maybe try to build up with like a c3 and a d4. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but but not maybe allow black to get quite as much counterplay. And I don't know if you agree with that or not, but that's kind of what I'm looking for. Right, right. No, it's, uh, it's a nice strategy. Um, oh, just a second, my volume. Uh, can you please tell me what is your chess.com nickname so that I can invite you? Uh, it's um, it's Salesman Frank. <laughs> salesman Frank. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, that's my job. Is, uh, I'm a salesman. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining from Fiona's uh, stream. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for watching the match today. Uh, just a second. I'll, uh, uh, um, sales man Frank together, right? Yep. Uh huh. I have sent the invite. Okay. Perfect. Let me see if it pops up on my screen. Yeah, about the uh, chess.com analysis, I don't like that. Uh, when I start to type the nickname, unfortunately, it doesn't offer to select from the members. So I have to like uh, uh, write it precisely. Um, for example, it would be normal if I would start to write like salesman, Frank, and it starts to offer me uh, from the list of I members. Didn't, um, I didn't get any. Uh, no? It doesn't seem. What, what's your name on chess.com? Uh, GM makes sense just as on Twitch. <clears throat> Let me search you. Okay, um, I'll I'll send you um, a friend request, and so you should get that, and then that should allow you to. Maybe I s sent it to salesman Frankie. I don't remember. Oh, just uh, just a second. I can try it again. Just a second. Okay. Uh, it's slightly easier from here. Uh, where is it? It's so difficult to find it. Um, everybody who just joined from Fiona, we're going to be going over um, the Bishop B5 Sicilian and just trying to learn that um, opening. I wanted to try to learn. And um, Arthur has done a lot of research on it. I saw a video he had online, and so I'm excited to see what he can teach me about it. All right. I, uh, I just sent it to you. Do you have it? Okay. So it should pop up on my screen then, you think? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> to be honest. Hey, is that okay. the lines? Well, okay, I mean, you can try to invite me as well. It's uh... Yeah, I'll try that. Okay. Then I'll close. share i think i did everything correctly from my end but uh yeah maybe there's some glitch i don't know um so how do i invite you to an analysis board i guess i've never done that oh uh you have to go uh to the live chess the old live chess i think okay. uh then you have to select uh, not the time control but on the right there's this um, type of game standard uh... live etc so you select analysis board and then where's the invite students uh, you type okay. in uh, GM Nixon. So that's my Twitch's handle. Uh, I did it on purpose so that people can find. Okay, I see you. Okay, here you go. Okay, perfect. Okay, here we go. All right. All right, we've got it. All right, so I guess uh, you can start to ask the questions. Um, do you, do you, by the way, do you have the databases themselves? If you don't, I can of course send them over to you. I don't think I have them. Yeah, if you want to send them, that's fine. So, All right. so uh, basically, I guess, in your opinion, let's let's start with the variations that you think. Um, so, so knight f three is the main main move, and then bishop b five, right? <laughs> Yeah, um, but uh, there's uh, one one minor little thing. Um, it's two major lines. Obviously, it's the Nidorf line, d6. And I call this as the Moscow Rush with bishop b5. Uh -huh. And then there's the knight c6. That's the Rosalimo. And after e6, which usually leads to some Sicilian Tamanov, I propose to play g3 because I cannot really 
um, make after e6 uh, any bishop b5 to make sense really because it doesn't so so that's already a good point because i faced that in some blitz games as i was just kind of uh, messing around with this and i they played e6 i also thought okay bishop b5 doesn't make any sense <laughs> now right so so then i was playing c3 but you like g3 better uh c3 i can tell you a very short story why i don't like c3 so much okay uh c3 uh mainly the reason is knight of six e5 knight e5 and um uh knight of three is probably the tricky point but uh i think that this one of the most topical lines after d4 c takes c takes d6 knight of three uh what was it d takes d takes this is not the most popular line but uh, people who have studied this line, they know this, is that the point is that after knight c6, bishop c4, there's the very strong knight b4 move. So that's uh -huh. the not not uh, the main theory, but that's the strongest. Uh, I've actually I... had this over the board as the black pieces one oh. time. I, pl I played an expert. Uh, I was able to win the game with black. It was. This is a very good setup. Yeah. I think white yeah. white has nothing here. So if white wants okay. to play some some sort of a lapping, he probably needs to include knight f3. But I can right. still play d6. I think this d6 with early capture on e5 is uh, not good. I mean, let's say I'm still trying to play d4 is still c takes so i'm switching to the same line after uh, yeah. uh c takes d takes d takes knight c6 super easy setup and something like queen d4 e6 followed by six knight c6 is uh easy actually i think i i did a boot camp about this um uh, i i'm running this educational boot camp something like once every two weeks and i did a special topic about the um uh, sicilian lap and how to counter it from the black's perspective and um yeah, I'm, I'm not impressed, really. So, yeah, so that's the reason. That's the reason why I'm, why I'm proposing. Well, so I guess my thought process was that they had played e6, and is there any is there any benefit now that e6 has been played that, that makes c3 stronger, or you think it's still the same? Yeah, it might. Yeah, it might. But uh, then again, uh, after c3, uh, d5, uh, yeah, probably white can still take it. And yeah. queen d5, I'm not so sure that's the best move here. And after e takes d4, probably this leads to some French exchange variation where white has played not the best move c3, but you're right. going to play with isolated pawn, isolated the queen's pawn structure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, from the white's perspective, yeah, that, that is playable. So if you like the Sicilian Lapin, I think this... Uh, this makes reasonable sense because I know that uh, some very strong players like, uh, uh, for example... Um, Rauf Mamedov, he's one of the strongest grandmasters from Azerbaijan. He plays only the improved uh, Alapin, at least he used to some time ago. So he never played the clean Alapin, as I call it, with c3 the second move, but only right. after knight f3 e6, and then he plays c3. And then you cannot really, uh, from the black's perspective, switch to these uh, favorable lines after uh Knight of 6, c5, knight e5, because you already have a pawn on e6. So that's the difference. Yeah, this is playable for white, definitely. Okay. So what does the g3 system look like? Right. So the uh, the g3 system, I have published the three databases for everything. So uh, database number one is d6, bishop b5. I can tell you that in detail. Uh, knight c6, again, the same idea is to play bishop b5 and trade on c6. Mm -hmm. And about the uh, e6, g3. So your idea is very simple. You want to play bishop g2, short castle. And now it really depends how your opponent is going to play. So for example, the most aggressive approach is d5. Okay. So d5, you want to take, take. And now a critical move is d4. And there are some, some interesting lines, really some interesting lines. So for example, let's say black plays very aggressive. Um, something like I'm telling this from memory. So knight c6. Bishop g2, bishop g4, and uh, the idea is that black wants white to force to take on c5, and if he does it, it's seemingly okay, but I mean, it's still an isolated queen's pawn structure, right. right? It's easy to play, but I think here's a very strong, uh, wait, there were two moves here, I think one was h3, the second was castle, I was analyzing them both, but for example, there's this tricky move, short castle so i've played this in online blitz occasionally and uh the point is after 94 you're playing queen e1 check oh 
Cool. Yeah, so 96, 95, C4, 93, suddenly uh, black is experiencing big problems at this yeah. uh, long diagonal. Um, uh, so, yeah, the best move, I think it was something like bishop e7, takes, takes, and queen e5. You know, you're attacking here, you're attacking here, and it's again isolated queen spawn structure. It's, I mean, nobody really knows this so good. I, yeah. I've played some games where I had the impression that Black knows what he's doing. Everybody else was co constantly misplaying this line. Yeah. So so another typical mis mistake here is just take the pawn. Uh, bishop takes on f3, queen f3 and knight e4. Oh, wait, it wasn't here. Ah, uh, yeah, it was here. Knight e4 with the idea that seemingly if you take, take bishop d5, there's a fork. But now you simply play queen uh -huh. d3. Queen d3 okay. here. Uh, what was it? Knight c3 here, bishop g5. You just went back to pawn on d5. Uh, okay. And there's nothing black can do about this. So it's very easy to fall into this. And black is suffering. And I could even, even some very good players falling into this trap. So c3, yeah. queen b5. I mean, this is almost game over. Yeah, yeah, very, very unpleasant position. Very strong bishop on g2. By the way, Frank, I like this a lot. Yeah, by the way, Frank, if I'm... If I'm uh, Telling this uh, too complex, you you are just feel free to stop me. This is uh, totally fine. Okay, yeah, I like I like what I'm seeing here. Okay, uh, so that is the that is the critical move, short castle. So the best move, I think, it was c takes. I think okay. so. And uh, and after c takes, I think I was analyzing knight d two, followed by h three, and uh, black needed to be very very accurate here. Something like knight f six. I think it was h3 takes takes and this might be something playable but this pawn uh black keeps to this pawn but uh you can even ignore it i think there was an idea where you somehow manage even to put position the knight on d3 and focus on playing at the king's side. again i'm showing this from memory so yeah. i could of course i could open the database and very quickly check it but there was the second idea the second idea, I think it was, uh, just a second, I think it was h3, just a sec, I'll open the database, just a second, I already forgot and I don't want to tell you uh, That's fine. something. I'll have to research it on my own a little bit anyway. <laughs> um, but, just a uh... second, I'll, uh, yeah, so it was d5, very quickly, I'll open it. Uh, wait, that's not it. That's not it. That's it's not funny it. that you, you mentioned D4 here, because when I play the close Sicilian, a lot of times I delay the D3 move um, before I wait until I see what black does, because sometimes I like to play D4 in one move in similar positions to this. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, wait, I think I, I, I mixed up. I mean, there's no alternative here. Uh, not h3 uh it was it was uh in this line after uh g3 knight c6 bishop g2 knight f6 yeah okay. so what can include it you're still playing knight c3 um yeah now it was d5 takes takes d4 yeah this is tricky yeah now here was this move h Three. There, there's still a short castle. And now is this move h3 with the idea that again now this idea again perfectly works. So you're playing queen d3, you want to play bishop g5, take on f6, take queen d5, c3, easy game. And there was this tricky line after c takes, h takes, d takes, and I think short castle. Yeah, okay. I think so. So it's extremely dynamic and interesting game. So I think this is still a novelty. Nobody has played like this. I haven't checked the database. I analyzed it. Uh, analyzed this what one and a half years ago. Okay, I haven't checked what happens in this line ever since. I never even got this far because nobody yeah. plays like this. And there were some tricky ideas how you are very quickly uh, gaining the momentum here and uh, organizing very active uh, game. So. Yeah, I, I have to check it, by the way, how, how this line is faring right now. But the big point here is that you might ask, why don't I play Shot Castle immediately? Because then I managed to play everything with the comfort. 
But the problem is d4. Right. d4 here, here, knight, if there's nothing. There's just nothing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. black is just super solid, very healthy pawn structure. I mean, you're not worse. But uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, yeah. So everybody usually plays against me like this. Um, so e6, okay. g3, here, here, knight c6, here. And uh, here, some people mix it up. Uh, they know uh, that there's this idea to play d3, try to close the center, and you very quickly gain the upper hand with, uh, I think it was short castle, d3, knight e2, f4, knight c3, knight e3, f5, g4, g5, checkmate. Wow. Uh, it's okay. very, very easy. I mean, I've played yeah. like this number of times, and they mix it up. They mix it up all the time uh, with uh, this line. And there was uh, some high, there were some high level games some time ago when indeed after queen e two e five is the best move, that's after queen e two but not against knight c three. So after knight c three e five is not good, d five is playable. You want to play short castle d four and switch to some kind of uh, open uh, Sicilians. But there's also okay. the, this great weapon. Let's say short castle bishop e seven. I can play d four. That's fine. Yeah, that's a good position. But you can also play king's indian attack so you're playing uh, d3 now you want to play either knight g5 or knight e2 g4 g5 or four or five and just go for the checkmate again in accelerated yeah. time control very easy i play this up to gm level uh in online blitz and uh yeah it just just feels so good and comparing uh comparing to uh the sharp lines uh, for example, after d4, c takes, knight e4. Actually, the biggest reason why I uh, dis decided to write this g3, I think that there's a way how black can uh, force white to play a sharp game. And it's uh, knight of 6, knight c3, and d6. So you have to play the Keras attack with g4. And that leads to crazy lines. So what was it? Uh, right. g4, e5 here... Uh, I already don't remember. Was it H5? I mean, I don't remember. So that's not anti Sicilian. Right. So that's the reason, at least for me, why I started to uh, pursue uh, G3. And yeah, again, I mean, there's a number of lines. Uh, Knight of six, you just play E5. By the way, I, what I like about this setup is that you can you can even use it against the Nimtsovich defense. Do you know Nimtsovich defense? It's Knight of six. Uh -huh. uh, there's a tricky line. You can still play the same. <laughs> Very easy. So so let's say black plays... Uh, what was it? I think knight c6 here. d6. d4. Takes. Now you take. And I think it was this. So again you have a very strong bishop on g2. Short castle, c4, mm -hmm. knight c3, and organize an easy game at the uh, at the uh, queen side. So definitely, I will I will send you after the lesson the, the files because I mean I don't think you have now the time to uh, check everything in uh, in detail. Right. Uh, so that's no, uh, I, I like this uh, uh, g3 though, and I like I said, very comfortable those positions that you talked about um, because like I said, I don't I don't mind playing the close Sicilian, and I think you know. At around expert or master level, um, black can very easily, you know, go wrong in these positions. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So this this line it, it has no official title. It it bears the unofficial title of the Adams aberration, but uh, the, uh, I don't know who who which Adams is it Michael Adams or another Adams. But its contribution <laughs> is so ins insignificant in this line. So I decided to title it as the Baltic variation. Uh, the Baltic Croatian I decided to title because I done some significant research there, and there are many players from the Baltic states uh, who are playing this line. So I thought, okay, I mean that's that's okay. one way to give it them um, some recognition. It's still not an official title, but maybe yeah, after some time, that's not really so important anyway. Okay, no, so I, I like this uh, G three, and definitely I will um, look more into this. Um, so so probably. Probably um, d6, I mean, after knight f3, I mean, d6 is the most common. Okay. So that's probably probably the best place to 
Yeah, about so about for, uh, d6. Yeah. So you're playing uh, bishop b5, and uh, normally the idea is just go for a uh, quick development. So you want to play short castle, you want to play something like c3, d4. And, you know, it's, it's quite funny that uh, I think it was actually Anish Giri who said he doesn't treat bishop b5 as anti-Sicilian. That's mainstream theory. I mean, it used to be some some weird sideline, but the thing is, in the traditional Sicilians, there is no advantage for white. So, for example, if we go, would slightly go back uh, with the, uh, let's say, d6, d4, c takes, knight e4, knight of 6, knight c3, 6. I mean, black's reputation is very good here. So there is so yeah. many lines, and white is trying literally everything. I mean, there's every single move. So there's bishop e3, there's bishop c4, there's bishop e3, there's bishop g5, f3, f4, h3, h4. There's rook g1, there's a3, a4. I think uh, one of the one Forest's uh, younger boys, he played bishop d2. Uh, yeah, there's so many. Ah, there's knight b3 as well. So, but the bottom line is, if this is line, this line is so great. Why you're looking for so many ways to uh, move the game to offbeat lines? So I suggest to do it right away. Yeah, and uh, and uh, bishop b5. Essentially, here are um, I would say two major moves. So move number one, bishop d7. This means uh, black probably is okay for a peaceful outcome. So that's not very aggressive. After bishop b7, you can just take it. And if you don't really seek uh, a lot of adventures, there's nothing wrong with this line. Short castle, uh, this is the old line. c3, knight of 6, either queen to or rook e1, this is fine. So let's say queen e2, d4, takes, takes, d5, e5, knight e4. Yeah, this is... This is completely fine. Yeah, I think it was. Oh, wait, I think it was. Bishop e3, knight e1, f3, knight e3, and f4. I, I, used, I used to play this line some time ago, but uh, I just uh, discarded it because I thought it's not really interesting. And I started to check what else is there. There's also quite an interesting gambit. For example, after c3, knight of 6, you can sack the pawn on e4 right away. Mm. But the idea after knight e4, you play d5. Very interesting lines, by the way. Huh. Right, so knight e5 takes, takes, rook e1, and c4, knight c3, bishop g5. You just ignore the pawn on e5 for some time, and black needs to be very careful here. Okay. But... Uh, the problem with this line, I think black can even ignore this and just play d5. <laughs> so that's a yeah. skilled player, What he'll probably do this. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, so what else is there? Um, yeah, so after queen d7 in the database, I'm recommending c4. Because okay. I'm a huge fan of the Marozzi bind. So this is the Marozzi bind, c4, e4, against the pawn on d6. White is going to play d4, knight e4. So let's something like this here, d4, takes, takes. I've played this line literally hundreds of times already. I mean, everybody plays this. Yeah, I, I've actually researched this a fair amount um, and, and uh, played it some, some games over the board as well. Um, I, I still need to, uh, there's some nuances that I definitely still need to kind of mm -hmm. iron out. For but sure. there's no equality. At least I don't think so. I mean... I've seen some very good players playing this line. They're always struggling. So everybody usually is trying to play uh, knight c6. I think it was short castle, a3, queen d3. Uh, what was it? e6. Yeah, that is the traditional approach how everybody usually playing this. But there's so many ways how you can try to uh, pressure black. I think it was something like... Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, I don't remember... I mean, in the worst case scenario, you can always take on c6, right? And just yeah. uh, pressure this, these weak pawns. But I think it was something like here. Uh, d5 wasn't working for some reason. And even if you feel not very secure, you can always play something like this. And it's quite annoying. This bishop on g5, I've played, again, multiple games in this line and black is suffering i mean he even if he manages to play d5 he equalizes so that's it that's his best uh, best achievement 
So this is probably better than like a standard Meroxy bind structure, I guess, because the queen can't go to a5. Is that no, the queen can go to a5. Yeah, it can go. So, for example, the, uh, some very advanced players are playing here. I think it is uh, d4, knight e4, f3, and queen c7. Yeah, I think so. There's this tricky line. But it changes nothing from your perspective. You're still playing queen d3. So, queen d3. Uh, yeah, what was it? Knight c6. I might mix it up. I might just it just it, it just kind of hit me. So oh, maybe it was B two. Sorry. So there's a. I guess there's one big advantage here is you've already traded off the light square bishop. Mm -hmm. You know, and actually, so actually about the uh, light square bishop, uh, it's interesting. But I would like to keep it on the board because uh, there is this uh, very uh, famous uh, Marazzi bind structure, which starts with the accelerated dragon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, knight of three g six. So you're playing c4, mm -hmm. bishop e3, knight i I'm a huge fan of the line. Um, yeah, I think it was like this, this, and this. So you have the bishops on the board. But mm -hmm. uh, black is suffering because he doesn't have a real counterplay. Uh, the spawn on c4 is always easily protected. And black is trying to trade off the pieces so that he gains some space for his pieces and that's also the reason why you are not you're not training pieces and you're just retreating you're closing and there was this tricky line of rook c1 rook c2 queen c1 against blacks queen b queen b6 queen b4 rook c8 and at some moment black is just out of the moves so it's something like this he just simply stops delivering good moves and again i played this line many many times so i think it's a great one so if you go back we have very similar Marozzi bind but with the last square bishops traded yeah uh technically it should favor white because that's supposed to be a bad light square bishop but then again for black it's slightly easier to organize this uh, counterplay against the pawn on c4 so he usually usually he goes for g6 um F3 is very important, important move order, and he tries to play A6, Knight E4, and B5. And the difference is, if you if you had the bishops on the board on E2 and on where it is, I don't know, on C8, it's gonna be more difficult for Black to achieve this, to achieve this. So, I think White's primary obje uh, primarily concern here should be try to stop B5 from happening. So Queen D3. So that was my uh, proposition. Uh, already two years ago, I found a rare game and I um, added some analysis on it. So knight e5, queen e2, rook c8, b3, b5 doesn't work to knight e5 and knight b6. Tactically, white is doing fine. So everybody, I mean literally 95% of the people, they play. everybody plays the same. They play e6 d5 so that's very easy to prepare against so let's say again uh, let's say again something like rook c8 b3 e6 again i don't remember uh the most exact uh, precise continuation but i imagine you can play something like queen d2 d5 and maybe just take take now you're threatening to win a pawn I think so. I mean, I'm slightly too lazy to calculate what happens there. <laughs> At least I've I've had some very similar games in this in this line. Yeah. So black normally plays f6, and you try to capitalize on the weaknesses. Again, I mean, it's a very easy game for you. Yeah. Okay. So so easy. yeah, I might yeah. Uh, I might experiment with c3 and c4 um, just to kind of see which one fits me better. Um, those, those different lines that you went over um it's like whether i'm going to go into the Maroxy bind or, or play the c3 mm -hmm. lines that we talked about i think i think the um the c3 line um that's uh considered to be relatively harmless c3 d4 uh okay. c c4 and the Maroxy bind at the professional level is considered to be quite dangerous okay uh, if uh, one of the sides managed to set up the Morozzi bind, it has pretty much a notorious reputation. 
because the opposing side is lacking to have real counterplay. But again, I mean, I mentioned, I mentioned here that there are a couple of moves, a couple of moves. So the other move is knight e7, mm-hmm. and this move is very aggressive. So that's the most played move here in the position. But again, I mean, you have a lovely choice here. Uh, hey guys, I missed your questions. Uh, sorry, I'll first I'll finish my lesson with Frankie and uh, I'll talk with you guys. Sorry, yeah, I see you're asking me some questions about some lines. That's okay. If if you get questions, you can answer oh, them. Okay, I, I didn't really understand the question about some queen d2 and some line. Which line was it? Can you please specify? Yeah, for example, in this line, I'm recommending short castle a6 and bishop d3 to rearrange the bishop on uh, c2 and play d4. But there's one interesting yeah. line. You want to play against strong players. And this is a very nice one. So now you play d4. Okay. And, and the point is, you capture with the queen. The majority mm-hmm. plays a6. So now you just take. You play knight c3, very easy development. You're just playing in the center, fighting for the central squares. And this used to be, it used to be the most popular line. Because uh, if you're playing the Nidorf, it makes sense for black to continue e5, h6. h6 is important so that you can play knight of 6, bishop c6, or bishop e6 with there. And then you just somehow try to capitalize on the two bishops. But here's a very annoying plan for white, and it is knight d2. <laughs> just, I just don't know what black is supposed to do here. So let's say uh, knight of 6, knight c4. Knight of 1 also is possible if black plays b5 here and that's it so you have complete mm. control over the center castle castle a4 rook c8 rook d1 uh you might have seen some high level games uh gary casper played the slime but black when he made the short return uh he was playing these rapid and blitz games in, in st louis um i've seen yanni pomishi playing the slime but black they're all suffering they're all suffering and uh I think the reason is that this line is considered to be sort of sort of harmless, but black cannot do anything aggressive here. So it's very easy, very easy to misplay this line. So you want to play bishop d2, bishop e1, a5, b3, and again Morozzi bind. Ah, uh, okay. So so black needs to at some moment to sacrifice the pawn on d5 and then seek some kind of equality. I mean, there's there is no way black can play active here. So again, yeah, so what what if they played b5 before you moved the knight to c4? I, yeah, it is possible. Uh, so I don't yeah, remember 90... from memory. I think it was something like here b5, right? I can still play knight e2. I think. I, I would I would need to check this. So let's okay. say knight of six and. I don't remember, to be honest. Okay, that's uh, maybe, fine. Maybe maybe knight of one. But now you were asking me, I don't know what's happening here with b4, and there might be some bishop b5. So I, I think probably you need so to So maybe be... just a, a3 first? Uh... Might be, but a3 is sort of a concession, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe, maybe then a4. Or maybe just knight e5. I mean, knight f6 is going to be bishop g5 now. So what happens if, if 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 instead of playing b5, if they play knight f6, then you play knight d2? No, no, you play bishop g5. Oh, okay. You gotcha, play bishop gotcha. g5, and he cannot even recapture. So your plan is you want to play something like this, knight e5, and whatever. I mean, yeah, uh, okay. I don't know, something like something positional, something like short castle. This bishop is never developed. Bishop e7, you're always threatening to take it. Take on d6. So black has these bishops, but unless he manages to capitalize on bishop b5, uh, yeah, bishop b5 here is c4, so you probably don't want to miss that. But, uh, you know, the reason uh, why people are not playing this line anymore, as far as I understand, is exactly this line. So I've seen some very good players, very good GMs started to play this line here, and they start with e6. So they're not playing e5 anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a question in the chat. 
That's a very long question. And if my chat, if you guys have any questions too, throw them out there. That's fine. Hey, Steve, can you please ask me more detailed? No, not detailed, specific question with the moves. Because when you are, are asking something out with the context, it's very difficult for me to immediately jump in, which is the moment. I mean, I just, I just don't understand immediately. Just post me the line. I'll immediately understand what you're talking about. Otherwise, Queen D2, which line again? <laughs> it's difficult for me to understand it. So yeah. here they're playing E6. And um, you can still play something like whatever, short castle, long castle, whatever you feel is comfortable. But let's say short castle, knight of six. Oh, how do they play here? Uh, bishop g5, bishop e7. And something like rook d1, queen d3, knight d4. I think so. And I don't think really black is... Uh, uh, just uh, enjoying these bishops too much. And uh, yeah, I don't think you want to push e5. e5, d takes, knight e5, that just opens the bishops. So you're looking for ways to play, let's say, queen d3. One knight thing, I, yeah, I was looking at maybe queen d3 and then bishop f4 to try and force black yeah, to play that's, e5. That, that, that makes sense. So I am i don't remember, again, the actual theory here. Maybe it was something like e6, knight of 6 And maybe you can even start with queen d3. Yeah, exactly. Just start with queen d3. Why not? I mean, I don't see there's anything wrong with this. So, black will play something like bishop c6 in order to meet your bishop before with d5, I would imagine. Right, yeah. But even that position... I mean, after bishop c6, you can play knight d4. You're already threatened to take. You can improve the bishop here on b2. It doesn't have to be on bishop g5. I mean, there's right. so many lovely ways how you can how you can improvise here and i just i just think this is so much more interesting than uh playing these uh crazy mainstream theory theoretical lines of the Nidorf. yeah and uh yeah but this line is uh, at the moment i don't think it's that popular i don't know what's the reason but i'm playing myself short castle and this is what i'm recommending so okay so short castle um if knight of six immediately you have the option to play rook e1 bishop f1 c3 d4 mm -hmm. so that's sort of a concession so there's actually interesting line how black can manage to uh, get to the uh, hedgehog a6 and b6 i think so so now you just play here and guess what it's a marazzi bind again <laughs> <laughs> so it's c4, knight c3, bishop e3. I mean, it's a hedgehog, but it's a mercy bind. And again, black is playing bishop e7, e6, bishop e7, and playing these typical hedgehog ideas. But you can still play bishop d3. So let's say a6 is the best move. You can still play bishop d7. But again, if you're here switching to this line, you're going to miss the absence of the f1 square maybe it is possible to transpose to this again here oh what was it let's say e5 queen e3 h6 knight of three knight of six rook d1 then e2, knight of one knight e3 knight e5 maybe it's the same i i haven't really paid too much attention on this maybe you can include a4 at the right time so it's all about the order of the moves the final position should be about the same um, right, but I like this more a little, slightly more. So let's say knight of six, c3. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, rook e1. Uh, this looks weird. It is weird, yeah. right? But, I mean, try to prove this because I, I want to play c3. I want to play bishop c2. I want to play d4. And right. suddenly it's not so easy for black to counter this. So I like this position a lot. Uh, there, there's you probably know like uh, I'm sure you studied Grand Prix attack at some point. There's similar bishop d3 c3 bishop c2 d4, mm -hmm. and I think um, again you know under master level I think black ha has a hard time finding out what to do here. Right, right. I mean this is uh, at the moment it is considered to be mainstream theory, so I think uh, Giri is right. Uh, this is no longer no longer. Um, anti-Sicilian, this is mainstream theory. I'm not sure about bishop d3, but the entire bishop b5 setup. 
So let's say black has three choices, b5, e6, g6. Everything else is slightly worse. Uh, there was this uh, famous game you might remember. Uh, Veslim Tupalov surprised uh, Magnus Carlsen in... I don't remember, 2015, 16, whatever. Yeah, he surprised with this move, and Carlsen lost with white. Hmm. So the idea is g5. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is this is this is fun stuff. And uh, Topolov uh, surprised Carlsen, and the best move here was uh, just a second. Knight g5. I don't th I don't think he played it. Maybe he did play it. Knight g5. Knight e5. Here. B takes. Yeah, and Carlsen played something like knight a3. I think so. Yeah. So knight c3. Rook g8, d4, c takes, bishop d3. Easy game. Again, you want to play bishop f1. You want to play bishop f4, bishop g3. I probably do three with the knight. So this uh, this uh, pin of the g5, there's nothing. There's nothing for black. I mean, it's very easy to, uh, to um, uh, get rid of the threats. Bishop g4 is bishop e2. Actually, I was uh, I was uh, playing against MVL in the um, Approaches League. Yeah, that was uh, 2018, and he played it very quickly. This line, I thought I know everything here, and he played bishop h6, and I didn't know this move at the time, mm -hmm. and apparently he was just bluffing <laughs> because, <laughs> because I checked the database. Uh, there is no such move. And knight h7, suddenly black is simply up a pawn. Uh, okay. Yeah, so knight h7. Because uh, if bishop c1, you can take with check first. Yeah, you just on take with a check, and, yeah. and there's nothing. There's zero. You just pos position the bishop on g3. And I won some games after that. Yeah, unfortunately, I lost the game. To be seen. <laughs> yeah. I, I was winning, by the way. I was completely winning, but uh, I, I lost yeah. it. So this, this line is... I think it's repetition. At the moment, it's uh, dubious for black. It's dubious because it has outlived its moment of surprise. Right and uh, nobody, nobody really played like this. At least I haven't seen it again. Uh, yeah, so B takes knight c three. Somebody tried against me knight d three. I think that's again not so good. Yeah, rook g eight d four c takes is worse. So what happened after knight d three? Uh, I don't remember. I just recognized the the move. I think it was something like queen a four, queen c four. Uh, okay. I think so. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm not 100% sure. So I collect the pawn. There was some counterplay. I mean, I don't remember how the game even ended. I was yeah. playing some online online game, I think. So that's the that's the sharp line. Uh, there's this, uh, there's this uh, very uh, positional line, sort of positional line. So black plays e6 first. And after c3, now he plays b5. And this is more interesting. Because now you don't want to play c4, right? So c4, you just lost the tempo for nothing. Right, right. So now you're playing bishop c2. The idea to play here, a4. And this is at the top level, has been played so far. So you're playing d4, mm -hmm. nothing to do. And now is this tricky line with queen takes. Yeah, bishop d3 also has been tested and queen e2. Very interesting. So... Mm -hmm. It's very easy to misplay this. And now the question is, why don't I want to play uh, knight a4? Right. It's very obvious. Normal choice, right? Because after the trade, I get two bishops, I have a healthy pawn structure, there's nothing to c complain about. But suddenly, after e5, it's very difficult to make a move for black. So, there's a sample line. Boom. <laughs> Oh wow! And this is a massacre. Uh, was wow. it? Was it uh, maybe rook d1? Maybe knight if I already don't remember. This is completely over. Yeah. The game of Bakro? Yeah, I don't remember. There was there's some very strong GM playing this line immediately. Game over. So wow. So after e5, I think it was knight d7 was the best, and now you just play. For initiative, something like this. 92, I mean, look at these bishops, these pieces. I mean, something is bound to happen here. And if castles right now, just queen h5? Is... No, just take on h7 right away. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, So, for yeah. example, Knight of Sun, there already should be something here. I mean, I don't know, some sacrifice? Maybe, uh, oh, maybe, yeah. maybe this is too much, but something along the lines uh, could be already possible here. There's so many interesting tactical motives. <laughs> this is anti-Sicilian. It's weird. Right. Uh, so, after Knight c5, Queen e2, people don't play on a4. Uh, this is also impossible. So, b takes. And uh, when I was uh, initially writing the database, I remember I was uh, advocating for e5. And there was some high-level games, I think... Anish Giri was playing... Again, somebody, I don't remember who. Yeah, some, some high-level games. And uh, when I published the database, I... Um, I got very good remarks from the uh, leading African GM, Amin Bassem, and he found uh -huh. improvement here. And he started to play himself against, uh, I think it was Wesley So, Bishop E3. And I analyzed this line, that's super, super interesting. And ever since I played this line, everybody falls into this, everybody. So after Bishop E3, so what you're supposed to do here, so you want to take here, you want to take here. So knight mm -hmm. e4, right? Right. Knight e2. It's very difficult, very difficult. You're down to pawns, but you're supposed to play here. So um, everybody, I think they were playing something like here. Now mm -hmm. this is a big threat. How do you handle this? Okay. So bishop c6 is the obvious choice. Now I think it was here, here, and black and resign. <laughs> something like this. So that, that's incredible. I mean, the idea is to play knight e5 sack. Take this bishop. Mm. So let's say here, here. Uh, I don't remember what was it. Queen C. Our oh, rook C. It loses. So something like bishop B7, knight of seven, something like this. Yeah, I'm just that was a forced win. I think so. Something, something along the lines. Maybe I'm slightly mistaken. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I just take it here. Take and something like queen H5, rook D1. This is already a killing attack. So. And I've seen that pretty much nobody know this move. That's weird. I mean, yeah. some people already have played this line before. And after I play every single time, like Bishop E3, everybody's like, what? <laughs> what am I supposed yeah. to do here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you can check it out. Okay. Um, yeah, that is the second line. It's very difficult even for black to... Uh, diverted here, so let's say c3, b5 here uh, c4 seemingly has to be played this has to be played, you probably need to take on d3 this pawn is under attack, you need to play knight c5, I mean it's very difficult uh, where black can really divert, this is bad yeah, and after bishop e3 uh, this game, I mean against Wesley, I think they played something like I think they played here what was the line again um, take and was it uh, d5 I mean okay it's uh, it's uh, very uh, very easy to check it at the database so it should be there they played it the grunge store and uh, I mean mm -hmm. was winning he was just winning after the opening. This is what I remember. So anyway, this is quite an interesting line. And there's the third line, uh, which is g6. Yeah, I think this mm -hmm. is one of the best. There is never a chance. No, Steve, uh, there is not a chance. So black, I, I even don't remember the best solution for black. I mean, that was a very, very narrow, uh, narrow, narrow tightrope walking for black. Um... Yeah, but white controls the initiative right after the game. So g6, bishop g7. Um, yeah, I think it was... Sh oh, wait, sorry, I forgot to move. How did I forget to move? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's uh, rookie one first. So c3, bishop c2, d4, and e5. And this also used to be uh, quite a high level line. Uh, the point is, d5, b5 engines uh, keep announcing here that this is better for white. This is not better for white because... Yeah, I don't like this at all. Yeah, you just close the position, engine says it's uh, so good. It's, uh, <laughs> it's so good. I mean, black has an easy game at the 
Yeah, the yeah. king said, angels don't understand everything, right? Yeah. And I think I found an improvement here. Uh, there was a Dmitry Yokovenko's game, I think, against Yanni Pomnishi, and he played A4. Okay. And the idea is takes, 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 knight C5, knight C3. Again, black is sort of active, uh, some sort of a Ray Lopez position. And uh, he is trying to play active pieces. Yeah, the bishop on g7, yeah, it's uh, well placed. But, I mean, I have the impression that uh, black still needs to be on the defensive here. So, I think Nepomnishi played something like d5 here. d5, e5, and he lost the game. I think so. So, maybe it was something like queen b6, and I already don't remember. I don't remember what was after queen b6. Uh, with the idea to position the queen on b4. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, maybe rook b1, I don't know. So rook b1, bishop g5, knight e4, something. So uh, white needs to watch out from the d5. Yeah, this, so this is quite an interesting line. Um, but normally everybody plays e6. I had some games when people are playing b5, c4, b4. And um, this, this makes no sense. Almost. So you just play something like a3. Uh, I think it was e5, takes, takes, bishop c2, and d4. And again, you're enjoying a very good position. Yeah, and uh, obviously, uh, with the bishop on d3, there are some ideas when black is voluntarily playing knight e5. I already don't remember which is the best moment. I think it was something like here, here, yeah, and here I think knight e5. Yeah, this is quite interesting as well. Yeah, so again, you take, take, and play... Was it... Was it b3? Yeah, b3, a4, bishop b2, knight a3, knight c4. Engine says white is a lot better, but it's a close position. Yeah. So I would, I would say it's uh, closer to equality. But yeah, engines really like it. So, yeah. Okay. Right. So that's about the... Uh, about the uh, Moscow. Yeah. About the uh, the um, uh, the Russell Limo with knight c6. Now this is completely different. Mm -hmm. After knight c6, bishop b5. Your idea again. You want to play shot castle. Uh, the major move is g3. Uh, I'm sorry, g6. Mm -hmm. There's e6. Uh, yeah, but I was advocating for a quick take on c6. And this is also what uh, Fabiano Carano was playing against Magnus Carlsen in the World Championship match. Right. And uh, Carlsen started to play D-takes on C6, the line which I was considered to be not really uh, so good because Black is uh, sort of fighting for the draw, but he proved otherwise. He found some new ideas. I, di I didn't even know they exist. And right. yeah, I mean, obviously, he probably knows more than I do. And, but I love this idea. Is that after b takes on c6, I I I started to like this weird move d4. Mm -hmm. uh, the point is, there's some funny traps. I mean, even GMs are falling into this. Uh, bishop g7, take, queen e5, here, and bishop a6. <laughs> and seemingly, <coughs> what is in trouble, right? I mean, how do you play here? And suddenly comes the shocker. And it, it takes a while for Black to understand that he's in trouble. Because what do you do here? So you just want to play b4. Right. So queen c5 is b4, bishop b2 is c4. What is this guy doing here? <laughs> so that's a bad move. So, okay, so b b4, uh, queen b6, uh, what? Uh, okay, then... let's, say, let's say c4. Okay. And then... Short castle, bishop b2, you trade off the bishops. And the bishop on a6 is completely shut out, and the immediate d5 doesn't work. So, uh, so I uh, I guess I was just uh, I was uh, missing that after bishop e2, black can't take on b4 because then bishop g7 bishop yeah, takes yeah. g7. It's right. Yeah. yeah, here you can play immediately bishop b2 as well. That's that's completely fine. Yeah. So bishop queen b4 is bishop g7. So the queen is under attack. You're gonna do that. But the funny line is here after. Uh, 
uh, bishop a6, rook b1, queen a2. You play b4. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the line here? Uh, just a second. I'm trying to remember. Knight b6, and suddenly... <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> this is so nice, and uh, you're capturing the queen, and it is something like bishop b5. Yeah, because you're threatening to win a piece as well. Here. Oh right, right. And boom. <laughs> wow. And after knight c bishop c4 knight g5, shake hands. <laughs> and, wow. And even the very good players have fallen into this. Uh, this this used to be. This used to be a uh, uh, big discovery something like a year ago. I don't know if people know this already. I've trapped some people online. So, so with this uh, a b takes d4, bishop g7, d takes, queen a5, knight d2. Bishop a6 is a, a bad tempting move. You just, you just cannot do that. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like black's winning. You're right. And then... <laughs> Suddenly yeah. black is in big trouble. Yeah, rook b1 yeah. just changes everything. So black is supposed to play instead of the bishop a6 queen takes, and it's very easy. Short castle, rook e1, e5. I okay. think it was d6, knight f6. Um, I don't remember. Should I include? Yeah, I think it was first e5, knight b3, and knight e5. Then I get an easy game. Um, yeah. Queen e2, bishop d2, some weaknesses here. The engine says it's uh, an equal sort of, but uh, uh, Black needs to prove this, right? So okay, so his uh, his move it's a Black's move. So so what if like Bishop e6? Uh, um, where? In the position you were just in. Yeah, you can also position um, it. By the way. Uh, yeah, no, you, uh, you were there. Um, let's see. Here? Knight takes e5. Yeah. So so what? So I just I want to see this kind of play out. So bishop e6. Okay. Bishop e6. Um. I I don't remember. I think it's something like we need to. Okay. Short castle. So you're you're just you're not worried about them taking on b3. You think? Oh, here. Yeah, I don't no. know. Are you gonna take back with the a pawn? Yeah. Uh, we just we just take back with the a pawn, but. Um, I think I think what I I would be worried here is if Black gets very strong open bishops, right. but this bishop on e6 and this this guy on g7 they don't really leave a very good impression. So Black is looking for ways to open them and something like knight e7 or I don't know somehow get rid of this knight. But it's easier said than done. So knight e7 just drops a pawn. I think doesn't I don't know. Yeah maybe. So knight e7 maybe you can even play bishop f4. Take, take. So black, in perfect play, he achieves a draw. Okay. <laughs> so that I doesn't, right. I don't really mind that. So this is quite interesting line. Obviously, there's there's more than this. Uh, yeah, this uh, d4. There's, for example, c takes on d4. Very interesting. So you just play queen d4, knight f6, c5, knight e5, shoot castle. Uh, Queen h4, rook d1, c4, knight c3, bishop h6. Very easy. A very easy game for black. And uh, I think I remember Firuja was playing this game. Uh, that was a, a couple of years ago. Um, he was playing... Although I don't remember for white or black. This tricky move, f6. But okay, I mean, if your opponent is playing like this, then uh, should be should be easy. Again, Marat Morazzi Ban gotcha. is the ultimate cure. So C4, Knight, C3, etc. And your opponent is suffering. Gotcha. Perfect. All right. Yeah, so we... Um, I think, uh, you know, I don't want to hold you more than an hour. Um, <laughs> so, but because but, I think it was just probably a good stopping point because we might uh, we might do this again sometime and go, maybe go into some more depth on it. Um so we'll maybe we'll reach out and coordinate another one. Um, I also might reach out to you. I mean, clearly, if you're playing the bishop b5 slowly and you're playing e4, um, you know, against the French defense, and some that might be something that maybe we'll talk about later. Um, 
and do do a lesson if you're up to it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, sure, we can do that. I mean, it's obviously it's very very difficult to explain uh, the essence of the anti Sicilians in in the short time frame. Right. But by the way, I uh, yeah. I also I think I did boot camps about all of them. So just in case uh, you're looking forward to check more, uh, you can also mm-hmm. at the free time. I think I did them quite a high level. I I posted them in my YouTube channel. They're in the playlist of the boot camps. Okay. So okay, every single one. I mean, it was the anti Moscow. There was the uh, Rosalimo with this idea of uh, D4. I think I, I think I explained it because nothing has changed ever since. The Baltic variation with G3 and the Marozzi Bayern. I even had a special uh, lecture about the Marozzi Bayern. I mean, how great it is. I mean, I'm just a big fan of okay. the Marozzi. All right. I mean, it was yeah, fun. Yeah, I'll definitely. Yeah, I'll definitely look into those. So, yeah, no, I appreciate it. Uh, this was very informative. Uh, definitely, I'm gonna go back through this again and watch the <laughs> watch the video again. Um, and uh, I'll be experimenting on this in my games when I'm playing on Chess.com and just kind of working out the ironing out the issues and trying to make sure I'm an expert on the lines that you went over. So. Right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, being here with, uh, with me today. Yeah, absolutely. All and, right, well, and thank see you. <laughs> yep, all right. Yeah, thank you so much. We'll see you later, and we'll coordinate and try to do it again sometime. Right, okay. Take care. All right, yeah. thank you. Have a good yeah. day. You too, you too.